What's up, it's Cinema Shogun here, and there are still no answers as to where Quentin Simon is. A 20-month-old toddler from Savannah, Georgia, that was reported missing on October 5th. Now, the Chatham County Police Department hasn't said anything about foul play yet, but I can tell by how the investigation is going that now they are trying to focus more on the foul play aspect as opposed to, oh, you know, the toddler just got up and walked out the door, went missing aspect. And there's a lot of drama now circulating this case. I can tell you that the community is in an uproar. People are scared because there's this uncertainty of if there is a child abductor in the area. But also, it seems to be the general consensus of the community that the mother is guilty. Why? I'm not so sure, but I've heard a lot. And from what multiple neighbors have said, these kids were being neglected. And there was always commotion going on in this home. And yesterday, the babysitter spoke out in a live stream. I have the whole live stream on my channel. If I were you, I would go check it out because there's a lot of stuff revealed. Um, like I said in that video, I'm not trying to insert myself in the drama. So I don't really want to provide all of my opinions on the back and forth, but just to give you a quick rundown. Basically yesterday, Quentin Simon's grandmother broke into the babysitter's house. I mean, just barged into the house, took the babysitter's daughter's cell phone, started screaming, almost got in a fight with the babysitter, accusing the babysitter of stealing baby Quentin. Now, who knows what happened? In my opinion, I don't think that's the case. I don't think the babysitter has anything to do with this. And the babysitter revealed that the kids would come over to their house dirty, without diapers, without food. It seems to me like the babysitter was one of the main ones, if not the only one, that really cared about this kid. And there's a lot of shady stuff going around about the grandmother and stuff too. I mean, it's a dysfunctional household. They hired a nanny to take care of their kids, even though they're home and could take care of their own kids. But, you know, the grandmother doesn't trust the daughter around the kids. The grandmother actually has custody of the kids, but they're all living in the home with her. They were about to get evicted. It's just a lot of drama. But I just wanted to make it clear for everyone who watched the babysitter's live stream that I personally believe the babysitter, not just because of everything she said, but because I've talked to people in the area and I don't want to be messy and reveal a bunch of messy stuff about people, but a lot of people in the area seem to feel some type of way about this family. Let's just put it like that. And the babysitter even said that, that multiple times Quentin came over to her house and had bruises on him. And she was texting the grandmother, warning the grandmother, letting the grandmother know about all of these issues and nothing was ever done about it. But yeah, she talked for over 30 minutes. I suggest that you go listen to it. But after doing some digging, come to find out this family has a really shady past. Quentin Simon is actually named after his uncle. And his uncle is actually in jail for murder right now. I believe when his uncle was around the age of 17, him and a couple of other friends killed someone in the woods close to this house. Now, there's a lot of stories out there about what happened. I'm not so sure the details about what happened. Some people say they tied someone up, tried to rob him, and basically executed him there in the woods. I don't know the details of what happened. That's just alleged. I couldn't find out the gruesome details of how this guy was killed. But I know for a fact that Quentin Simon's uncle is locked up right now. Let's just go ahead and get a little more of the details surrounding that because isn't it? It's just odd. I, I want to be clear here that I'm going to talk about some things in this video 
that I am not trying to say is directly connected with Quentin missing. I'm just saying it's weird and I'm giving you an idea about this family, but Sharif Palmer, AKA Hothead, 16 of Pooler, and Aaron Saddam, AKA Flacco, 16, and Nathaniel Quentin Betterton, that is Quentin's uncle, 17, were all indicted on charges of malice murder, adding to their previous indictments of felony murder, aggravated assault, and armed robbery. Palmer, Saddam, and Betterton were arrested in connection with the murder of Moore after his body was found September 6th in the woodline of Garden Acres Mobile Home Park at 1105 S. Rogers Street. An autopsy by the Georgia, the Georgia Bureau of Investigations Medical Examiner's Office determined the death was a homicide and that Moore was the victim of fatal gunshots. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe Nathaniel Quentin Betterton was actually sentenced to like 45 years. So I don't think he's getting out anytime soon, but this happened in 2011, okay? So it's just really weird that a kid goes missing and he's named after his uncle who is in jail for murder. And obviously, like, I know there's conspiracy theorists in the true crime community and people are get weird, but I'm not saying that this has anything to do with anything. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how shady this family seems to be. And now it looks like there's a possibility that brother and sister are both killers. But I mean, uh, we hope that's not the case. I am hoping that by some miracle, Quentin made it out of his little baby gate and walked out of a front door and he's just out here running the world like freaking Forrest Gump. But the reality of the situation is this looks bad. I know that the mother and the father were taken in for interrogation. And when they got home, a big fight broke out between the mom, the boyfriend, and the grandma and the stepdad. So, I mean... <laughs> The dysfunction in this family is insane, but it goes to show that dysfunctional families, they don't always have something like this happen, but dysfunction in families can cause chaos. There is no doubt about that. So maybe that is why a lot of people in this community already have a bad taste in their mouth when it comes to this family, because the son is in jail for murder and from everything I've heard, the person he killed was actually a really cool, down-to-earth type of guy. But as I was looking around, someone reached out to me, and I'm not going to say your name because I, know, I don't know if you want to remain anonymous or not. But they gave me another piece of information that was really interesting as well. So it turns out that Quentin Simon's great-grandmother was actually the neighbor of two people, or I guess we could say three people, who killed their kids and buried them in the backyard. Let's just go ahead and watch this clip real quick. Arrested in the deaths of two people, arrested in the deaths of two Effingham County teenagers. One of those teens had been missing for two years. WJCL's Leandra Larson is live now with more on the investigation. Dale, what started out last night as a welfare check turned into a death investigation. Tonight, a community is trying to understand how something so terrible could happen twice. I've been doing this 41 years, and a while ago, I almost broke down in tears. It's not bad. I just, I cannot understand how you do children like this. It's horrible. Thursday, the bodies of 14-year-old Mary Crocker and her brother Elwin Crocker Jr. were found in the woods by their home. The boy was 14 when he was last seen two years ago, but neither one was ever officially reported missing. The children's father, Elwin Crocker Sr., his wife Candace, and her mother, Kim Wright, have all been charged. It's devastating because I can't imagine somebody killing children. Neighbors shocked to find out what was happening nearby, saying the family was unapproachable. I don't know, they just very standoffish people. We I've tried to be friendly and they they're not. Investigators say the adults lied about where the children were. Later on in the day, the father led them to the bodies. 
people who have known these children through the years and then all of a sudden they disappear, they, they should try to find out, track them and all like that. When people disappear off the grid, something's wrong there. Today, officials said they were trying to get in contact with the children's mother who lives in South Carolina. Now, she has not been charged, but we're told more charges and arrests could be possible in the next few days. Reporting in Effingham County, Leandra Larson, WJCL 22 News. Now, once again, to be perfectly clear, because I know that some people are watching this video right now and the gears are turning in their heads and they're like, how can we turn this into the greatest conspiracy we've ever come up with? That's not the point of this video. I don't think that the great grandmother has anything to do with Quentin or, or anything to do with these two kids that were found in her neighbor's backyard. I'm just showing this to show that like, in some weird way, there's like this energy or something surrounding this family. You know, if you look into true crime cases, even look into like certain serial killers and stuff, you would be surprised by some of the weird stuff you can dig up about their family members and their loved ones or close friends. In my opinion, sometimes, I don't know exactly how to put this, but sometimes there's just this dark energy, like this dark cloud that hangs over certain people. And it's like, those are the type of people you don't wanna go around because you know, the type of people like, oh, there's always something bad happening to you. Or you're always there when something bad happens. You have all of these stories surrounding you of negative stuff happening. And that's how I feel about this family. Because there's other stuff that I know and other stuff that I've been told that I'm not going to sit here and reveal on this video. Because it's, it's none of our business. But it's just crazy how this kid goes missing. What are the coincidences of... A kid being named after his uncle who was in jail for murder. The kid goes missing. And it just so happens that the last big missing persons case in this town or around this town was right next door to the great grandmother. And just to be clear, the woman who was speaking out in that clip about her neighbors and about how she couldn't understand why anyone would kill children that is the great grandmother. Think about the irony of that. If We don't know what happened to Quentin yet. We don't know. Maybe he's still alive. But if something bad happened to Quentin and Quentin's mother just so happened to do that bad thing, then just think about how weird it is that two years ago or now I would say probably like four years ago, the great grandma or Quentin's mother's grandma was on the news talking about how she couldn't believe that anyone would kill children. And she was living right next door to this family who disposed of their kids in their backyard. And these kids were missing for two years before anything was done about it. Now, like I said, I don't think this is tied into this Quentin missing case at all. It really has nothing to do with it. I just wanted to show you some of the shady stuff and some of the weird stuff surrounding this family. But I will say this. Is there a possibility that what happened next door to Quentin's great grandmother maybe gave Quentin's mother some ideas? Because you see, those missing kids that lived right next door to Quentin's great grandmother, they were missing for years. Nothing was done about it. Nothing was said. Maybe that gave them the idea that they could get away with it. That they could get away with it for a couple of years. Or at the very least, maybe they thought that we could one-up it. We could do something a little bit smarter. Now, of course, that may not be the case, but I'm just saying, like, was there some inspiration there? Was there some ideas that were put in your head there from that case? Because you gotta know that Leilani, Quentin's mother, knows all about this case that happened right next door to her grandmother's house. It was the biggest missing persons thing that had happened in this town and I don't know how long. 
So it's a weird dynamic there. I don't know if maybe she got an idea from that. Maybe was inspired by that. Maybe that case made her feel like she could get away with something. But once again, we don't know. It, Quentin could be okay right now. We don't know what happened as of yet. But I just wanted to lay all of that information out there for you all, just to give you an idea of where we're at here and to give you an idea about this family. And yeah, I mean, who knows what the hell will come out next. But let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. While you're down there, hit that thumbs up button, hit that subscribe button, ring that notification bell, and I'll talk to you all on the next video.